Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today is our 10K Q&A and also we will reveal the winner of the giveaway. So Doug's going to join me for the first couple of questions in this video since he has answers for them too and then he's going to go outside and finish his work. Howdy folks. Hence the reason he looks like this. Yeah. Still finishing up winterizing the yard. So um, last week when I announced my 10K giveaway, I said in about a week we would film the 10K um, Q&A. We will answer your questions and then we will also reveal the giveaway. So I have all of the comments in the random comment picker and at the end we will reveal who won the giveaway. But let's start answering these questions. I'm going to pick out the ones that Pertain to me. Pertain to him too. So, number one, what is your retirement vision? <laughs> Work till I'm dead. <laughs> we still have a ways off from that. I'm 20, 21. Don't you wish. <laughs> I'm 52. Doug is 53, soon to be 54 in January. Um, so, we still have a while to go. Yeah. But we have started thinking about it and planning for it. Um, the answer to that is not really sure until we find out where the boys end up. Yeah. I truly don't expect them to come back to New Jersey. Maybe they will for a little while, but I don't really expect them to settle here because New Jersey is ridiculously expensive to live. Mm -hmm. Um, I see them staying more down in the Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia area, probably. I don't know. I could be totally wrong. Um, Andrew wants to work for the Department of Defense as a teacher on military basis, so he could end up anywhere. And Adam really wants to work for the federal government, so he will probably be down in the Maryland area. So maybe when we retire, we'll move that way too, just to be closer to them. I really don't know, but I have started more on a path to retirement. Um, as my little babies go to kindergarten, I'm not replacing them anymore. Um, so, I mean, I have a nine month old, so it'll be a couple years, yeah. I hope. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing. That's our plans for retirement. Yeah, and um, I'll be working for at least another 10 years at the company I'm at, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I, you know, we always joke that we're gonna sell the house, buy an RV and live six months in Andrew's driveway and six months in Adam's driveway, but you know what? Who knows? Who knows where we're going to be 10 years from now? But that's kind of what we're working towards. Uh, what is Doug's occupation? You want to take that one? Sure. I'm a CAD designer. I do computer-aided design for a national, actually international pump company. Um, it's Xylem is the name of the, um, my parent company. The, the pump, company, pump company itself is called Godwin Pumps. Um, we're all across the country and actually we're international. So let's solve water is our, is the Xylem tagline. That's what it says out on my shirt. Yes. He, um, cause Xylem has a bunch of water companies. They do analytics and processing and all kinds of stuff. If you remember several years ago, there was a mining accident in Pennsylvania where the miners were trapped in a mine. Yeah. Doug's company was instrumental in rescuing them. Yeah. Um, one of the guys happened to be out in, where was that, Erie? Uh, Harrisburg. Harrisburg. On business and had the news on and saw about this mining accident, he quickly contacted the authorities and said, look, I work for a pump company, we can help. Yeah. And they mobilized so incredibly fast and got, pump like, I'm not talking like a little sub pump, I'm talking like a pump. Yeah, these, these are 12 inch pumps that pump thousands of gallons a minute. Yeah. Um, and they mobilized and they got pumps out there and got them set up and they rescued the miners. Yeah, they well, kept the miners from, from, from drowning. From drowning. Yeah. And yeah. it's funny, like it wasn't that big on the news because they were miles away yeah. where, where the doing pumps, this. Where the pumps were weren't where they were drilling to, to rescue the miners. They were like three, four miles away. Yeah. But so that's, that's where the entrance to the mine was. So that's where they had set up the pumps. So that was really cool. Just a little thing about his company. Yeah. Um, when you first started Weight Watchers, did you have any resistance from Doug or the boys? 
on your new style of cooking. Do you have anyone who tries to sabotage your efforts? So I'll let Doug answer that first part. Did I have any resistance? No, because the food she cooks, I mean, she's a great cook. And um, whether it was some high fat dish or something that she cooks now that's much more calorie friendly, it's all good. It's really good. I mean, and it's, it's beneficial to the rest of us too. So I'm, I'm very happy with it. I tried to keep our old family favorites and just make them a little bit more point and calorie friendly. I mean, it also helped that Doug was on a wellness journey too. I mean, he's the one that started this whole thing. Yeah. You know, I didn't start until February of 2018. He started in January of 18 and he kind of kicked my butt into it. Oh. So yeah. And the boys, they're teenage boys. They will eat anything I put in front of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, so, they don't try and sabotage you. They just go out and eat like Taco Bell and. <laughs> yeah, there, there honestly is no one that tries to sabotage. I mean, there's really no one that tries to sabotage me. Um, and if there was, I would just handle it. You know, I would never say, "Oh no, I can't have that," or "Oh no, don't you offer that to me," because I need to fit this into my lifestyle. Other people do not need to. I need to fit into the world. The world does not have to fit into me. Um, you know, and I would just say, oh, you know, no, thank you. I didn't save enough points for that today. Or, oh, no, thank you. I'm not hungry. Or, no, and you know, like I have a ton of food allergies, so I can always use, oh, there might be something in that that I'm allergic to if I didn't want to hurt feelings. Um, but I really, everyone has really, really embraced and really um, lifted me. And what's the word I'm looking for? Gave me. Instant. Yeah, like, I, no one has ever been negative. Um, I mean, a couple times I've had people say that I'm getting too thin, I need to stop, things like that. Yeah. But for the most part, no one has ever tried to sabotage me. So I've been blessed with that. Okay, I'm searching for all the Doug questions, I'm sorry. Oh, here's one. I have, a, a, re, a subscriber wrote, I have two boys, 11 and 12 years old. Your kids seem like such your kids seem like such good kids. What is your and Doug's best parenting tips? Number one, they are really good kids. Um, yeah, we're blessed. Are they perfect? Nope, they're not. But I wouldn't want perfect children. No one's perfect. But we are lucky. They are, for the most part, very good kids. Um, they are 21 and 19 right now, and both in college. Um, I would say for me, my two biggest parenting tips is, number one, we try to raise them with the um, acronym of joy, Jesus first, other second, yourselves last. Mm -hmm. We don't want them to be putting themselves before everything else in life. Um, while self-care is important, we feel that by raising them with the attitude of putting others before yourself will make you a better person. Um, and you know, we, you know, from watching my channel, we're Catholic, we're very Catholic, we're practicing Catholics. Um, so we definitely raise them with the Jesus first mentality and the what would Jesus do mentality. They've, they've got a very, very strong volunteer um, aspect, which I think comes a lot from you. Um, they, like they're, they're quick to help, you know, to help out for anybody, for anything. If there's a, if there's a volunteer opportunity, they're on it. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's how we've tried to raise them to think of others before themselves um, with a servant's heart. Yeah, servant, that's the word I was looking for, yeah. Um, and another another thing is, I feel that you have to let your children fail sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, we are not the type of parents to be right behind our kids, rescuing them at every turn. Um, <clears throat> I support them. I will help them if they ask for help. But if they screw up, I'm not going to rescue them. They have to... They have to own it. Yeah. Um, you know, like you don't get your homework turned in on time. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It's your responsibility. Um, 
you know, we were not, we're not helicopter parents where we are flying over them constantly. Did you do your homework? Did you study for a test? Did you do this? Did you do that? If they come to me and say, hey, I'm struggling a little bit with this. Can you help me study? Absolutely. But we taught them good habits. And, you know, once they get into like junior high and high school, they need responsibility. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's things like, especially at, 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 when it comes to schoolwork, like when they do that kind of stuff, I can't help them because I don't know what they're doing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah. Like probability and statistics. Yeah. Yeah. No. I never took that course. No. Calculus. Yeah. No. And he doesn't remember any too, calculus. Too long ago. <laughs> but you know, it's, they learn to help themselves. And even in college, I, I am amazed at how much they advocate for themselves. And you know, like they don't even mention it to us. Like they'll mention it in passing, like, oh, by the way, I emailed this person because of this. And yeah. I, I'm just so proud of that, that they've become such responsible young adults. And I think it's because we weren't always there to pick up the pieces. And let me tell you, it hurt this mama's heart a lot of times yeah. to see them fail at something or to see them not succeed, I should say, at something, but it taught them left lifetime lessons. Yeah. And giving them responsibility is something we did early. Like they always had things that they were supposed to do or they had to do. So from the time they could walk, yeah, they had chores. Yeah. Now I'm not saying it was always easy because sometimes having them help mommy <laughs> made things a lot yeah. harder. But they loved it. They thrive on responsibility. You know, from the time they could make their own beds, they made their own beds. Was it how mom would have made it? No. No. But you know what? It's okay. They took pride in doing it. Um, emptying the dishwasher. You know, one had the top rack, one had the bottom rack. And even when they were young, like two years old, I would give them the silverware basket out of the dishwasher. I would take out all the sharp stuff and then they would sort. It was educational because they would be sorting. Plus, it helped me. You, you know, you put all the spoons here and all the forks here and all the, you know, butter knives here. It was giving them responsibility. They live in this house too. Mm -hmm. We provide everything they possibly need. They help out by being a member of the family and helping. So I think giving the kids responsibility was huge. And they are both very responsible young adults now, as responsible as young adults can be. But they really are. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of them. So I think they are the biggest parenting things that we had. And I think that is all the questions for Doug. I'm looking. Yep, that's all the questions for Doug. So Doug is going to go and... I got some yard work to do. Do some yard work. So I, oh, I'm going to finish this. See you later. Okay, how tall are you and how did you determine your goal weight? I am five foot four inches. When I stand up really, really straight, I am shrinking a little bit. And Weight Watchers determined my goal weight at 146 pounds. When I hit my goal weight, I decided I wasn't quite comfortable there and wanted to go a little bit lower. So I set my own personal goal weight at between 135 and 138. Lately, I've been hovering between 138 and 141. And I think that is part of perimenopause and hormonal. I'm not really sure, but my clothes still fit me. I'm still comfortable. So we're just riding it out right now. Did you and Denise from Dish With D meet at Weight Watchers? No, we did not. We met at church. We both go to the same church and we had known each other actually before that. Um, I had gone to a different church and every once in a while her and her family would attend that church and she knew my sister, my her kids and my sister's kids went to um, grade school together. So, but I would say mostly now we met through church. How do you come up with different ideas for meals each week? Well, I love to cook and that helps. And I love to try new recipes. So what I will do is, you know, I get a couple different cooking magazines. I get Quick Cooking and Taste of Home. Um, and I have a lot of cookbooks. And sometimes I'll just flip through those and I'll see something that looks good and I'll mark it. I love Pinterest. I'll see something on Pinterest that looks good and I'll mark it. And 
Nine out of 10 times, I have to lighten them up and that's okay. But we also have our family favorites and I've lightened most of them up considerably. And the ones I can't lighten up, I just learned to fit in. You know, we love the Amish style chicken and, ch well, chicken pot, we call it chicken pot pie. Some people call it chicken and dumplings. Some people call it chicken and noodles. There's really no way to lighten that up. And it's like 15 points, but that's okay. I fit it in. Low point breakfast, low point lunch, or zero point breakfast, zero point lunch, and then I can fit it in. So most of my recipes are old family favorites, but like I said, I try to throw a new one in there every now and then. And yeah, Pinterest is a big time sucker, but it helps in the end. This question, this person writes, this question is very person personal, but I noticed you have switched from shorts and jeans to mostly skirts. Any particular reason or does it just make you feel better? Um, over the summer, I wore nothing but skirts and dresses just because it's very comfortable in the summer and I just love summer dresses and skirts. I think they're adorable. They look cute with sandals. Um, and you know, even though I don't work during the summer and I work from home, I do like to generally wear nicer clothes because it makes me feel better and it makes me feel more productive. If I was to stay like in pajamas or in yoga pants or sweatpants, I'm not as productive because I feel that relaxation mood and I don't feel like I'm ready to get, I don't know, ready to go. And that's just me because I know some people are much more productive when they wear comfy clothes and you have to find what works for you. Um, but I, Doug really loves when I wear skirts and dresses. I think just because it makes me look girly and he just loves it. So that was another reason. Um, you know, we try to do things to keep each other happy and to make each other happy. And if it's something little like that, then why not? Um, now, I do have a lot of winter skirts, um, but I still wear jeans. I still wear capris. Um, I always wear shorts to work out. You know, it's just kind of a personal preference. And it does make me feel a little more girly and a little more, I don't know, put together. Maybe that's a good good word, put together. Um, and I always like the way they look. I think they're kind of cute. So no other reason than that. I mean, not for religious reasons, not for any other reason than just, I kind of like them. But like I said, I like my jeans too. You know, we went out the other day and I had jeans and a really cute sweater on because it was cold. Now today it's like 75 degrees and yeah, it's Jersey weather. <laughs> How did you get started with your channel and what equipment do you use for filming? I got started with my channel in February of 2019. Um, I was watching a lot of YouTube and a lot of Weight Watcher YouTubers and I thought, you know what? I can do this too. I think I have something to contribute. So I just did it. I just jumped in and did it. I filmed my intro video and, and went from there. Um, and as far as equipment, I use my iPhone. I think when I started, I had an iPhone 6 and then maybe an iPhone XR. Now I have an iPhone 11 Max Pro, um, but I don't have a special camera or anything. I have a cheap $15 tripod and that's it. Um, I did recently purchased an editing program, but I had a coupon for it, like a coupon code, and it was 40 bucks to purchase the whole program, and it has made life so much easier, honestly. I love this editing program. Kim, from A Girl on Her Phone, for years kept saying, well, years, I mean, I've been doing this for, what, a year and a half, but like for months and months, she's like, you need to get Movavi. You need to get, and I'm, yeah, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine with my freebie that came with a computer. No way. Movavi opened up a whole new world. I can do things much quicker and I can do kind of fun stuff too, like with music and everything. But that's it. I have nothing special. I don't, I do have a ring light that I got from Amazon, like through like a deals and steals site and it was like 10 bucks. I've used it once. Yeah. So no special equipment, just my phone and a cheap tripod. Uh, the next one, which devotional do you use? Um, I use different ones. Right now I'm using one called Everyday Holy by Melanie Schenkel. I have it linked in my Amazon store below. Um, 
it's quick. It's it's a hundred different little things, and it's for women, for moms, and it, it's a really good one. I really enjoy it. Um, when that's done, actually, come December first, or I'll have to look. I have actually a Christmas devotional that I just bought off of the um, out of the LTD catalog that I'll be using, and um, it's all Christmas related. And once I'm done the Melanie Shankle one, I'll just look for another one. I like short little stories um, that are accompanied by a verse. Not necessarily a Bible study, but someone's personal testimonies and personal stories. I find that that gives me a lot of encouragement. How do you pick yourself up after a bad eating day? We all have them. I try not to let it go a whole day, but if it does, I always have the attitude that tomorrow is a new day. I have a brand new set of points and I can start again. I am not going to let a bad day turn into, I'm not gonna let a bad meal turn into a bad day. A bad day turn into a bad week, a bad week turn into a bad month. Cause once you have a bad month, it's really easy to go down the rabbit hole and not recover from it. So I just try to remind myself of why I did this in the beginning. I try to remind myself of all the benefits I've gotten from losing the weight, you know, getting off of medicine, being able to exercise, being able to not think about getting down on the floor to play with the babies and not being able to get back up, those kind of things. I try to remember all the good things and all the positives, and that helps me refocus and get my act back together with my eating. I'm not perfect, and I do have days where I just go off the rail. I make sure I track it all, I make sure I account for it all, and I move on. That's what you have to do. How do you work through hunger pains? And what if you don't have safe foods ready at the moment? Most of that happens with me with the safe foods if I'm out somewhere and I'm out too long. I do try to keep a little bag in the car with some protein bars, some little packs of pretzels. Um, what else in there? That's pretty much it. Protein bars and little packs of pretzels because that's quick, easy go-tos that aren't going to go bad being in the car. Um, and if I don't have that for some reason, I try to remember something my leader said once. Hunger is not an emergency. Being hungry for an hour is not going to cause me to starve to death. I just try to get done what I'm doing, get home, or if I am home, get something made that is point friendly and safe. Um, and I feel, and I know people disagree with this, I feel that sometimes it's good to feel hunger because sometimes we say, oh, I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry. We don't know what true hunger feels like because face it, most of us do not let ourselves get hungry. We don't get that empty stomach feeling. Sometimes I think it's good to get a little bit hungry to remind ourselves like, okay, that's hunger. What I was feeling three hours ago was boredom or was just, just want something in my mouth, just want to eat. So sometimes I, I feel that it's okay to get a little bit hungry, but you also have to remember that if you are a little hungry, you can't just stuff your face until, because sometimes when we do get hungry, we tend to overeat. You need to take it slow and eat a little bit. And then if you're still hungry, go back and eat a little bit more, but not to binge. Um, but I do always try to have something at the ready, you know, even if, if I'm home, if it's some fruit, and you know, I've talked about a million times before, I have my fruit and veggie platter made up every day, something to just snack on until I can prepare a proper meal. How much weight have you lost and how long did it take you? I think I got this question about 22 times. Um, I lost total, when I hit my personal goal weight, I had lost 64 and a half pounds. And that took me eight months. I started on February 13th, 2018. I made my Weight Watcher goal of 52 pounds on September 11th of 2018. And then I made my personal goal on October 23rd of 2018. Um, now I'm fluctuating anywhere between 
59 and 64 pounds lost. Depends on the day, the week, the month. And I was quick. Um, it, it came off me really quick and I, I don't know why it did, but it really did. Um, to lose 65 pounds in eight months. I mean, I was determined when you put a goal in front of me, I'm pretty focused. Um, but you know, I ate the exact same way while I was losing all the weight that I eat today because no matter what or whatever it is that you eat and do to lose the weight, you are going to have to do forever to maintain that loss. You can't eat, you know, nothing but zucchini noodles and boiled chicken and cauliflower rice and, you know, funky crap you buy off the internet to lose the weight with the attitude of, well, once I lose the weight, I'm gonna go back to regular pasta and regular rice and I'll go back to having steak and, and pork and stuff. That's not gonna work. Once your body gets used to something, that's what it's gonna want. And I don't know about you, but I couldn't eat that stuff for the rest of my life. I need my pizza, I need my pasta, I need that kind of stuff. So I just learned to work it in. And so far, it's been a good thing. Can you make more air fryer recipes in the future? I will certainly try. I just picked up my new air fryer yesterday. So I will certainly try to do more air fryer recipes for you in the future. Now this is another one that several people had asked me. Did you meal plan and were you as organized before WW? Yes. I have been meal planning since probably Doug and I got married. Yeah, for a long time. I always plan my meals because when we first got married, we were on a very tight budget. Not that we're not now because we are on a budget. Um, so I had to make sure whatever I bought at the grocery store, I was going to use that it was not going to go bad. So I planned meals and I've been doing it ever since. Now, I did not learn this from my mother. She was a fly by the seat of her pants kind of gal. Um, my dad always worked until four o'clock. He'd be home at 4.15 and we ate dinner at 4.15 because that's when my dad got home. And sometimes it would be 3.30 and she was still like, oh, what am I making for dinner? Yeah, and I can't live like that because I'm a little OCD and I need to have a plan, especially being a Weight Watcher person. I need to know where my points fall. Um, but yeah, I, I've always been like this and the same with organization. I've always been a planner girl. I've always been a list girl. I've always, yeah. And sometimes it's a good thing and other times it's not. Um, sometimes I obsess over it, but you know, I work through it and it is who I am and it's never going to change. And that is it. Um, like I said, I got a ton of questions, but most of them were repeats or forms of repeats. So this was a lot of fun and I thank you for watching. And now let's get to the fun part. If you remember correctly, I was giving away two prizes. First prize was a $75 Amazon gift certificate and a taste box from The Bite Company. They were kind enough to reach out to me and wanted to pair up for a giveaway. So I thought this was perfect. So what'll happen was, is when I reveal the first place winner, I just need you to email me and I will get your email address and the Amazon certificate, gift certificate will be an e-gift certificate. So I can just email it right to you. And then I will give the Byte company your information and they will reach out to you via email and set up your taste box. And it's gonna be the same for the second place winner for the $25 Amazon gift certificate. I just need you to email me and I will email you back the certificate. So without further ado, let's announce those winners. So our winners are the first place winner, a taste box from the Bite Company and a $75 Amazon gift certificate is Donna Ewert. And our second place winner, the winner of a $25 Amazon gift certificate is winning at weight loss. So 
Ladies, can you please send me an email at jonespointedplate at gmail.com and let me know your contact information and we will get started getting your prizes out to you. Thank you so much everyone for the support and the love and everything that you give to me and my channel. Without you guys, there wouldn't be a Jones Point at Plate. I am greatly, greatly appreciative and greatly humbled by all of you guys. You are fantastic, you are uplifting, you are motivating, and if it wasn't for you, I know I would not be as successful as I am in this journey because you guys keep me going. And I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate you. So here's to the next 10,000 subscribers. Um, I can't wait, you know, to just keep growing my channel and being able to reach more and more people with what I hope is good content and, you know, something that helps you along your journey. So thank you again so very much. Um, I am so appreciative, as is my family, for all the support you give us. And I have made some amazing, amazing friendships through this journey, and I just love it. So thank you again, and I will see you all very, very soon.